Let me live and breathe in you. I have a saying sometimes when I pray, I say, Lord, wear me like a coat. <laughs> you know, I want you just to put me on and wear me like a coat. And not because of anything I'm doing, you know, because Lord knows I, I, I messed up so bad that I, those principles that you got in your hand that I gave you came from some really bad mess-ups. From falling on my face a bunch of times and not realizing there is no way I can walk holy before God. And believe me, I tried in my own strength. And I was around a bunch of theological people that, that, that said, yeah, you can do it in your own power. And I discovered, no, 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 I can't. He has to be, by His blood, He has to be what I cannot be. His blood has to touch my blood so there can be a change of nature. My old carnal nature was at war with my new Holy Ghost nature that I got when I got saved. Can you all see that? One's standing up for truth and the other one just wants to wallow. Now listen, unless you kill that old carnal nature, unless you bring it to the cross and you sacrifice it, you know what happens? That old pig nature that's alive in you is going to want to wallow. And it's going to look for places to sin. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And what does sin do? Sin separates us from the love of God. Amen. When you're walking in sin, first of all, you're losing all your leadership ability because people cannot follow what they can't trust. And you lose all of your integrity because there cannot be integrity without there being purity. You've got to be pure and you've got to be holy before God. Now, that don't happen because I'm so good. That happens because I'm going to the cross every day and with that Holy Ghost scrub brush, I'm saying, Lord, cleanse me from this sin and this sin, what I did today, what I said today, if I acted out of way. And by the way, Father, cleanse me from secret faults because I don't know if I did. I, I might have offended you and not even known, knew that I offended you. So I, I've, I've got to have your grace, Lord. It's got to be about grace. It can't be about how well I'm doing. So, Lord, I'm yielding to your grace so I can walk holy before you. I'm killing that old carnal nature. I'm taking it to the cross, and I'm saying with Paul, I die daily, but it's not me living any longer. It's Christ living in me. This is my hope of glory. This is my hope of being able to live right and holy and good before God. Now, listen, what I'm saying is no condemnation to you. I'll give you two scriptures right here. Jesus Christ, John 7, excuse me, John 3, 17. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. And I'll give you the first part, I'll, I'll give you the whole part of Romans 8, 1. And it says this, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after their old carnal nature, but they're, after, they're pursuing the Holy Ghost nature. They're following after the Holy Spirit. Is what I'm saying making sense to you? Listen, it's hard to give life if you ain't got no life. If there's no life in you. Now, let me quote something else to you. John, chapter 6, verse 53, says this. It says, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. How much life? No life. You've got to take that communion cup, and when you drink, take the communion, and when you eat that bread, you've got to take that bread and say, Lord, this is the Word made flesh. This is your flesh. This is all revelation. And I receive that Word. I receive that living bread. Do you understand? And then you take that cup, and you say, this is the blood of my Lord, and it absorbs all evil out of me, and it releases all righteousness in me. Now, when you start to get a hold of that and just start to grasp that, that alone will be enough to change your life forever. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. The Holy Ghost nature will be released in you as the blood of Jesus touches your blood because it's what destroys the works of the devil. Jesus was manifested for three reasons. He was manifested to proclaim the word of the Lord. He was the word of the Lord. Yes. He was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And he was manifested to seek and save that which is lost. Yeah, that's right. Now, when he's seeking and saving you, you cannot go, okay, Father, this far and no more. I just can't deal with that now. And the Holy Ghost is putting his finger right on it, saying, you got to deal with this or it's going to kill you. And, and, and sometimes, you know, like 
well, the song you were singing, you know, I went ahead and I did it anyway. You know, when we get to that level, listen, something slipped when we get to that level. That new nature has not been given its proper place. And the old nature has been put up on the throne, and you wonder why you cannot hear from God about a certain situation. When I was a youth pastor a number of years ago, and it's been a while, and this will kind of date me, but you cannot, and I used to tell my kids this, you can't have two live crew in your ear and have peace in your heart. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? You can't be feeding on a bunch of trash and expect there to be peace and joy and, and, and strength in God. You're either going to serve one or you're going to serve the other. You can't have two masters. Either you're going to have one or you're going to have the other. If you try to serve both, your whole life's going to be caught up in the warfare. Because both sides are going to be vying for control and the Father's not going to take dominion over what He doesn't own. Now listen to this. How many of you know that the Lord... Has, the Holy Spirit has gifts in operation. He operates in His gifts as He chooses fit. Now, let's check this out. Sometimes we just get an understanding. It just dropped to us. You know, it just comes from heaven. It's, that, it's what we're talking about. You only get that which comes from heaven is the only thing you can really stand on. You've got to have revelation. You hear what I'm saying? The Spirit of God spoke into my heart. I was in a church service. And he said, I want you to say this. I want you to go up to that pastor and I want you to say this to this congregation. And I said, okay. Uh, what do you got in mind? And he said, listen. He said, you, you say this exactly. Some of you are saying you are filled with the Holy Spirit, but you are not. Now that was enough to kind of shake it a little bit. You know what I mean? Kind of make them sit back and go, man, who's, who's this guy think he is? But then the Holy Spirit backed it up with this. He said, if, if I do not, how can I occupy what I do not own? How can I occupy what I do not own? So this goes to surrender. This goes to, to being close to God, to knowing God. How many of you want to know God intimately, closely? You want Him to show up when you pray. You want Him to love you and you feel that love shaking you to your core. You want that. Because your only true comfort is going to come from the Holy Ghost anyway. The Word's already said that. So, if we, if we, if we know that, then this, how, how many of you know we've got to do this? We've got to trust God, we've got to clean house, and we've got to serve others. If you'll follow that simple, simple thing, trust God, clean house, serve others, the Holy Spirit will begin to work in your life to solve your problems. Now, how many know the, the Lord rebukes us from time to time? We're talking about the gifts now. We're talking about how the Lord moves, how the Spirit operates. We've got to take that word first. We've got to believe it, right? We can't have our ideas and say, you know, I, I don't believe in this and I don't believe in that. No, you need to get in that book and find out what you believe by the book. Because <laughs> we ain't smart enough, ain't good enough, ain't strong enough. So we've got to go to the book for help, and then we've got to ask for the Holy Spirit to help us to understand it, because we, we just get that all messed up if we're not. But the Spirit of God said this to me. He said, uh, I could feel this in my heart. Now, I'm not saying God spoke to me in an audible voice, and I understand that. I'm saying down in my heart, in my conscience, because my conscience was clear and my hands were clean, I could hear what the Lord was trying to say to me. This is what he said. He said, Son, you haven't asked me for a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom to solve your problems. He said, you've been trying to solve your problems with your own intellect, your own smarts, your own goods. And he said, where's that, where's that going to leave you? Now, now we got to hear from God. Now, listen to me, folks. You, if you're going to operate as a temple of God in this earth, you've got to be connected to heaven. You cannot be dragging yourself down and saying, well, you know, I can't do it, brother. You know, go to Brother Dean and say, Brother Dean, I just can't live right. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't live right. One guy said this to me. He said, uh, he was talking about the carnal nature, and he said, you don't need more therapy. He was talking to me and a group of other people. He said, you don't need more therapy. You need to die. Some of y'all need to hear that word tonight. You don't need more therapy. You need to die. 
You need to bring that old carnal nature to the cross. You need to nail it to the cross. And you need to let the Holy Spirit bring life to you and revelation to you. Now, I'm going to give you a challenge tonight. I'm going to give you a superior challenge for this next week. I want each one of you to search yourself. Search yourself and see if you're in the faith or not. Ask yourself the hard question. Am I living right? Am I doing right? Am I loving right? Jesus put it this way. He said, all the law is fulfilled in this, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your strength, and that you love your neighbor as yourself. Now, if we're violating something, people get to the letter of the law, and that don't work. You've got to get to the spirit of what the Holy Ghost is saying in your life. The letter kills, but the spirit makes alive. As you ask yourself that, am I loving right? Have I forgiven? Have I really forgiven? Yes. In Matthew 18, now listen to me, you can only stand on the word that's in your heart. When the Bible says stand, therefore, you know, you come against a battle, yes. and it says to stand, you can only stand on the word that is in you. That's right. You can't stand on the word that's out there in that book because it's just a letter to you. But when you begin to say it out of your mouth, get it in your mouth and in your heart, and you begin to say what salvation is, those verses I gave you in that, I want you to study those verses. Look at those verses. Read what the new covenant is. He's not going to remember your sins anymore. He's going to bring you to himself, and he's going to establish his word in your heart. But for him to establish his word in our hearts, we have to throw off the old man. We have to get rid of every kind of sin. We've got to get rid of every kind of of uh, evil or naughtiness, <coughs> even, even the idea of sin. We got to run that stuff out. We got to get clean, and then we can begin to engraft the word. Yeah. How many farmers you know that don't plow their fields? They just go out and throw seed. Anybody know a farmer like that? I'll show you a bankrupt farmer like that. You've got to bust the ground. You've got to bust it up. Now, I'm going to be talking a lot this next six weeks or so. I'm going to be talking a lot about foundation. I'm a concrete guy by trade. I know about foundations. I know when they're bad and I know when they're good. A bad foundation is one that's not dug deep, not held together with something like concrete, just throw a few bricks in the ground and decide to prop a house on it. That's a, that's a bad foundation. And not only that, I've seen people... I've seen stuff I've had to fix that I just couldn't believe somebody even built. Mm -hmm. I had one house they built onto it, and they propped three or four blocks on the ground at about 8, 12 feet apart in all directions and just let the thing sit. And she goes, the lady asked me, she said, I don't know why I got cracks in my walls and all this kind of stuff. I said, well, it probably is because of what's underneath that. That ground's moving and shifting and shaking. I said, but we can fix it. And guess how I had to fix it? Me and a couple of men had to crawl under there with this much room to work with and dig down at least 18 to 20 inches and put concrete in it and then put blocks on top of that and reinforce that and jack that house up and then shim it. How many of you know that was not a fun, pleasant thing to do? What I'm talking about tonight is not a fun, pleasant thing to do. But this is the stuff that will get you strong. This is the things that will make you whole. Yes. These are the things that will break the power of the devil in your life. Yes.